Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Reel Up My Park from scratch. Welcome to episode 11, which incidentally is episode 1 of the phase 2 of the build. So let's just keep that nice and complicated, shall we? We're back in Raygate Lake then. So this is our ultra-realistic UK park that we're building. And it's got a sort of a medium budget, thinking along the lines of... Uh, Drayton Manor and Thorpe Park and everything that kind of that kind of level of, of prestige and guys thank you so much for everything for phase one as well like I keep saying every single episode the community support for this park makes the park what it is I just build a, an ultra realistic park it's you guys enjoying it that makes it what it is so whether you're new to the channel whether you're returning multiple times thank you for your support it's, it's all is all I is all I have to say and so here we are then Raygate Lake so nothing's changed since the since the release I've let it settle for a couple of weeks i've done loads and loads of research into different elements and things to talk about in phase two so obviously phase one having a bit of a focus on a bit of the, the learning side of why we do things the way we are so i started to research some of the other new topics that i've not had a chance to talk about so they're going to be coming up in in this next phase of the series and i don't think this whole park is going to reach a phase four i think phase three would probably be the final release given the amount that we managed to get achieved in phase one but I'm now back at work full time so I need to sort of balance everything out now so whereas before I'd, I'd be able to spend weeks and weeks and weeks on it solidly and that was essentially my my job uh, I now need to balance my actual real life with with doing videos so I still want to do a, an episode once a week but I don't know if we're going to get as much done in each episode so let's just see how that how that plays out shall we let's just let's just go with the flow so this phase then we've got loads and loads and loads of opportunities that we can still do so i definitely want to do a wooden coaster in this in this phase i definitely want to do a kids area and there definitely needs to be some kind of a launch coaster and the whole idea of the park is that it would be a, like a unique ride offering so we wouldn't want a suspended coaster or another inverted coaster because we've already got our slc and um, we wouldn't want another like dive coaster because we've already got that over here with the Eurofighter. so each roller coaster that this park is going to add needs to be unique in some way we also don't have an airtime coaster either so i think we should probably do that but like i said in the very beginning i don't want that to be a, a mammoth coaster i don't want that to be something that dominates the park um but we do need a headline attraction and i think i want to have the wing coaster as our headline attraction because they seem to be like the the thing to have especially for a medium type budgety park that would be able to market something You're thinking along, along the lines of raptor at gardaland and swarm at thought park um and like uh, flying eagle is it flying eagle wild eagle at dollywood that kind of that kind of prestige coaster you know it's something different it's something especially as we've got the stand-up coaster here as well it fits in quite nicely but for the first couple of episodes this is where we're going to be spending our attention now i put this poll out on facebook and i put it out there to see what people wanted and you all overwhelmingly said you wanted the hotel to be done next and begrudgingly i'm going to agree to do that um so i've done over the last couple of weeks loads and loads and loads of research on the hotels that we operate and the functionalities behind them and how they're laid out um and i think rather than trying to do this in some kind of order i want to take almost the design of one of a hotel that i know quite well and almost put it into the park just so that i know that i'm replicating the realism properly um but when it comes to building a hotel you have loads and loads of things to consider so the game itself is nice and easy you just put it in as um you just put it in as, as those blocks and, and, and that's it but in reality hotels have got loads of things so we're going to go through those but if you're wanting the real quick list now are you ready are you ready for this so we need a reception room, guest rooms, conference center, restaurants and kitchens, cleaning areas, maintenance areas, admin offices, warehouses, service areas for things like bins and rubbish, gardens, electric substations, water treatment, guest parking, gift shops and box offices. Then we have to consider whether we're having a gym, a pool and games rooms, luggage areas and fire exits. So those are the things straight away in a hotel that, that you need to consider. So. What I'm thinking of in this area is this this whole bit needs a bit of a, a rejig in terms of um, pathing and everything. And I kind of want the service areas and everything to be buried underground. So a little bit like the way that the Gardaland Hotel does it. that All of the service areas are buried underground and, and you sort of re go up go up a level to the to the main area. You go into the, the foyer area and then you go down some stairs and then you open out into a garden. Um, I don't want the rooms to be attached to the actual hotel because I want to be able to utilize space elsewhere. Um, 
and so that's what I'm thinking at the moment is is having the service area. So I I don't know how this is going to turn out yet. So I think I should probably just get on with it really. I mean this is five minutes in already and I haven't actually built anything. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's see what comes out of the first phase, shall we? Here we go. All right. So here's your first update then. And I'm kind of hoping that this is going to give some kind of context as to why the hotel complex is probably going to take two or three different episodes to do because hotel complexes for theme parks are massive and for example if you take the the Alton Towers hotel complex you could probably fit three or four of the theme parks areas so you could probably get Forbidden Valley, Dark Forest and the X Sector all squeezed together and still be smaller than the hotel complex over by the car parks and so because this is such a big project you'll be familiar with how I build and my building style and know what I'm doing here I've started to already sort of give the foundations and the layout of where I want to put things in the hotel just to get it all down but because this is going to be a couple of episodes worth of work and there's going to be a lot of stuff that goes into it, I've actually taken the opportunity to label where I want things just to make sure that I'm covering everything off. Um, so I'll give you a tour of this in a, in a second, but just to show you what I'm doing in the car park area, I'm already starting to reconfigure how the car park works. So you're going to drive down the left-hand side here past all of the disabled parking, past the drop-off, and then you either carry on around the right hand side to exit or you go around the left to go into the hotels and then that comes into the car park area that's going to be here or the drop off area at the top here or you've then got the service roads that come down into the warehouse area or to the back of uh, our coaster over here uh, so this is where I'm sort of sitting at the moment with everything so I've already started to plan everything that's going to go into the hotel and the order and everything that's going to be built so for example over here I've started to do the accommodation block I've always wanted this to be a separate accommodation block. I didn't want it to be attached to the main building because I didn't want it to just be one big lump of a building. I wanted to have a bit of character. And so what I've done is I've taken the average size of a hotel room in the UK uh, and put place that into Planet Coaster. And I think the bathrooms are probably a bit too big in this, but it just gives me an idea and a feel for how the rooms are going to, going to be laid out. And it enables me to put 24 in a block. So it's going to be a couple of stories high, which enables us to have just short of a, the 100 rooms in the game. And then I'm going to make the hotel actually physically usable in game by utilizing the space on the second floor uh, over here, which I'm actually going to hide the hotel. So we already know that in game you can build a very elegant, very beautiful hotel in a really small footprint. But like I say, hotel complexes for theme parks are massive. And so I've already um, put down where I want everything to be. So let's let's do a let's do a tour. So from the guest perspective, then you're going to start in the reception area. So you're going to come in here and it's going to be a nice open wide reception area. You've got your reception desks all along the side here. You've got your lifts and your elevators to take you down to the to the lower floor. And you've got a bit of office space and a luggage store just on this same level as well. So that's taking care of all of that. Your office space doesn't need to be that big. Uh, there's not going to be many people that are going to actually be based in this office. You just need to have enough space for them to actually physically work. And then we're going to have a gift shop over on this side as well. So this is where your, your gifts are going to be. And then once you come out of the uh, main reception area of the hotel, you can then walk down the stairs and this then takes you into the main concourse area. This is now at ground level. So this is where you're going to find your bar uh, where you can order your food. So we're going for the more casual dining experience. We're not going for a formal restaurant experience. So it'd be a case of grab a seat somewhere in the bar area, order your food at the bar and it would come out. It would come out to you. So this would all be dressed up with nice little sofas and a few tables and chairs and, and stuff in this area but then you've also got a stage area here as well just to allow the entertainment for the kids so this is where Gulpy would come out and probably do some kind of dances and all well, the mascots for the park whoever they may be would come out and do some dances and I want to make this area usable as well so that I've just brought the path around here and so then we've also got the conference center uh, just on the right hand side of the hotel. So you've actually got the main conference room itself, probably able to hold 200 people. We're not talking a massive arena style conference center, uh, but we're not talking a small conference center either. Um, you then also just have a bit of a lobby area. So this is where you could collect before you actually go into your conference. Then you've got the toilet areas as well, which are going to need kitting out and everything. So that just gives a bit of a conference center zoning. And then over on the far side, I started to think about facilities. So I've connected up the service road to the roller coaster. And I've also put down a placeholder for me to put in the electricity and the water treatment. Don't think it's going to be this big. I've just used some of the rooms from the main block here just to give a feel for how I, how I want this to be or where I want it to be. I don't think it's going to be that big. Um, and we're going to have a pool. 
uh, so you've got the swimming pool area here with a pool bar. Um, and I've, I had the idea of having like rock work all along here just to hide the back end of the park. So this is a bit more of a lagoon style um, thing. So that's going to be quite nice actually when that all comes in. You should have waterfalls and everything that's coming down into the pool. And this is just going to be a, a pool out here. You've got a bit of a jacuzzi area at the top here and probably a kid's pool the top here i don't know how quite how i'm going to deal with the water and everything in here um let's let's cross that bridge when it comes to it there's a lot of work that needs to be put into it then you'd have a landscaped area in the middle here so there'd be some kind of central feature don't know what that feature is going to be whether it's going to be a fountain whether it's going to be a ride whether it's i just don't know um let's just you know get there when we get there when we get there but you'd have seating and and everything around here anyway so uh and then back to the accommodation block so you've got your entrance points here 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 and here and i started to think about the fire exits which would be on the sides here and then at the back here so uh, i'm starting to, to think about that and then there would be some kind of service road or some kind of something that would take you around the back this way so that you you can escape and meet at your at your points that you need to and then coming into the lower level the actual etch uh, the echelons i was gonna say but that's the the higher level isn't it so the guts of the of the hotel uh, so this would be your bins area and your warehouse area so this would be where your deliveries would would arrive and be stored and everything so that's that's that one uh, then you've got a corridor that's going to run along the front of the hotel that takes you into the other bits um so you've got your kitchen for your restaurant it's probably going to be a bit of a dungeon kitchen there'll be no windows and stuff it wouldn't really want to work in that kitchen but hey uh, i could potentially bring it out here and have some windows underneath the road um so that at least you've got some kind of natural daylight but yeah it's going to be a bit of an awful kitchen to work in regardless and then you've also got the games room so i just decided that games rooms tend to be quite dark they tend to be quite like they're dark in terms of no daylight but you it's very artificially lit with loads of bright colors and flashing lights and sounds and noises and stuff so you kind of want to hide that away from your main area but you want it to be present so this is roughly where this is going to go. Sizes are going to vary, by the way. Um, I don't know if this is going to, be, going to be the actual room size, whether the kitchen, I don't know. We'll see. And then we're going to come into the laundry area here. So some hotels actually outsource their laundry. They would sort of have a lorry that comes and picks it up in the morning, um, take it away, be all washed and, and serviced and everything, and then bring it back the next day. And then they just rotate a couple of sets of of laundry and linen and, and stuff so uh, some hotels will actually do that to save space so they don't have to have a physical laundry but i think we should probably have a laundry here just to say that we've just to say that we've got one uh, and so the idea is it's going to be a two-story hotel that's going to be in here and i started to flesh out the look and feel for these sort of areas that i want it that i want it to be and then you've got the drop-off point here some kind of focal area whether that's going to be flowers or whether it's going to be a tree or a, a structure i don't again just don't know i just don't know um but i know what i do want is this garden area to come along down here so there's going to be a garden path that's going to come across here and it's going to come all the way around and it's going to feed into the to the main area um the main hotel area and so i've kind of i've kind of borrowed quite heavily from gardenland and alton towers for this kind of inspiration so you'll probably be familiar with what i'm trying to achieve if, if you've been to either either of those hotels um, and so that is pretty much how it's going to go so as you can see there's a lot of work and if you think about the space that it's taking up in the park we're probably going to be dealing with the same size area as the western area that we were dealing with and remember that th this whole thing was what five episodes so gives you a bit of a feel for how much work now needs to go into this into this hotel complex but we're going to get on with it and i'm going to do as much as i possibly can as quickly as i possibly can but still giving it as much attention to detail as, as it actually needs so that's eight minutes already gone let me stop talking let me just get on and build it shall we let's go for the second update all right so in amongst this absolute mess that you can see right now is actually a hotel that's starting to come together quite nicely so the last few hours have all been spent dealing with the basement and the facilities and the functionality of the hotel the guts of the hotel if you like but i've also started to have a look at some of the actual styling of the hotel so i've looked at existing theme park hotels and the more modern style hotels so i'm thinking along the lines 
Point of Drayton Manor's Hotel. But I've also looked at some of the more high street hotels that we have, which are the very modern designs. Think of along the lines of boxes and square edges and everything. So that's why I'm using here a lot of brick, white stucco and wood panelling uh, with the black outlines and everything. Because it's just a very bold style and I think the park would lend itself quite nicely to having this kind of hotel. Given that the hotel would probably have been built in the last couple of years, this is kind of how I wanted it to how I wanted it to feel. And so it's all starting to starting to come together quite nicely. So think along the lines of these massive glass panels that you would have that look out onto the landscaped area and, and everything. So this is where we're sitting at the moment. Like I say, there's a lot that still needs to be done. There's a lot of things that need to be pulled together. I'm just toying around with some ideas at the moment. But this would be essentially the front of the hotel, this very sort of ultra modern, almost stark design that you've got where you would walk into the lobby, you'd have the reception desks on the right hand side and then you'd walk to some kind of balcony that would look down onto the, the seating area down below and then you'd walk down the stairs this way and, and out into the, the garden area and, and stuff. So you can also go to the right hand side and go to the gift shop which I still haven't even started like I say I've been working on the actual the lower ground floor but what I have done is started to work on the detailing down here so this is the bar area uh, I think I need some fridges I've just realized that I've not actually put any fridges in my bar um, but I've just started to do this detailing again it's this wood paneling effect that I've, I've sort of fallen in love with there's a, a beam on the TMTK or a panel on the TMTK that actually looks really really good and then when you couple it with the wood floor it just looks awesome and then the, the windows as well that obviously won't be green once you put the, the floor down it's just reflecting the green from the grass at the moment so uh, yeah this is the the style of bar that I'm going for very modern very sleek very nice very clean lines clean edges but with a bit of color splashed in along the along the side so obviously it needs its detailing it needs its tills and it needs its tea bars and bottles and all, uh, back bar clutter and all of that sort of stuff but that's sort of where we're sitting at at the moment and then the idea is that this area around here would be your restaurant, you'd have seating, you'd have all sorts of like quite nice lush sofas and chairs and everything with a stage here. But then we come to the arcade. So the arcade is quite nicely tucked away. And the idea of an arcade is it's supposed to be quite garish and quite in your face, almost obnoxious. And in the in the night time, if you look at the lighting, the nighttime lighting, this actually is proper and an, an obnoxious space um so if you imagine this is supposed to be loud and busy and noisy and noisy and loud are the same things um you can see like it's starting to come together but i wanted this to be a very colorful very vibrant area but also very modern and clean lines to go with the hotel style so that's why we've got very bold colors and very clean lines on the floor um and then you've got the uh, the skirting boards all along here and then you'd you'd have some kind of a roof obviously i've not put it on just yet but you have some kind of a roof that's a very plain roof but then you've just got these accent light areas um, and then you've got the, the down lighters and some up lighters as well just to give the the area some character and so this is where we're we're sitting with the actual games stall very like i say very modern very clean but very busy at the same time so it's coming along quite nicely uh, it still needs a few sort of like rough details and everything adding um once i've got the roof on i'll know how this how the space is feeling to know what else is needed uh, in terms of tmtk items and, and everything so um yeah so we come back through the back through the bar and i started this process of putting in all of the big glass windows and the panels and everything just to get a feel for this but i don't know how this is going to how this is quite going to pan out just yet something that's going to come along later i think but this is where the main bulk of the work that i've done has happened then so this is where the magic is starting to happen and there's quite a lot that i've actually done so this is the more service area um this is where your delivery lorries and your bin lorries and everything would would come in and this is the service part of the actual hotel and then you come through the uh come through the garage doors and into the bin area so uh, here we go with like a very warehousey kind of feeling bin area where you've just got a bit of clutter around and you've got all of the service bins and the recycle bins and everything for the for the entire hotel so this is going to need to be as close to the uh, entrance as you can possibly get because you don't want them to be polluting the areas you know these are going to smell these are going to be quite nasty to to be around sometimes so they need to be loaded very quickly into lorries where possible but then you come into the warehouse space which is where you'd start to store stuff for the actual hotel so these are like your stock and your bottles and your food and everything like that is, is going to be in this area 
And they've also just made sure that we've got some kind of ventilation going on. And um, this actually leads to the kitchen. So that when the when the kitchen is, is designed, this would be almost like the, the extractor fans for the kitchen and everything. Uh, and then you've just got this really like uh, stark brick wall. You wouldn't make much effort in this area at all to decorate it. It would just be a breeze block room almost that's just underneath the hotel and it's supposed to feel like the guts of the hotel and then i just put loads of uh, strip lighting along here just to give it that awful uh, fluorescent lighting effect that, that you get in this kind of area and then you walk down the really uninspired corridor that they've tried to tart up a little bit with some theme parky kind of things but this would be horrific to walk down this would almost be if it was an old building you'd almost imagine this would be some kind of haunted corridor um but you've got all the entrance points to the other parts of the of the hotel so like you can walk through this door and end up in the games room for example or you can walk through what will be a door here into the kitchen um but ultimately the end of the uh, the end of the strip when the ceiling and everything is in this is where the washing room is going to be so the laundry room and I couldn't find a washing machine on uh, TMTK, so I've actually ended up just pulling one together using random bits. So we've got the lampshades that you can find on TMTK, a couple of uh, what they call the uh, squares from the just the normal pack, you know, the art shapes, and then a couple of the TV mirrors and brackets, and then just some of the roller coaster stuff, just to give them a few buttons and everything, and the vents and. and but they've actually turned out really quite nicely i quite like how they've how they've come together they actually look like they might be big washing machines so that'll do you know it's, it's good enough um and then loads of storage so you'd have loads of towels and bedding and all sorts going on going on here loads of clutter um i don't know if i'm going to be able to do any kind of washing baskets like you know the big washing baskets on wheels i need to find a, a way of, of pulling those together i think because you don't just carry them around like you'd actually have this, these massive trolley type crate things that, that are going on so um and then just the stuff on the walls so you'd have loads of extractor fans if you think this is going to be a very warm damp area you're going to want to have a lot of the uh extractor fans and everything working just to stop all of the electrics and everything from from short circuiting and, and going overboard and i've just realized as well that these windows are actually too high so i wanted this to not feel a bit like a bunker but i couldn't put too many windows in because of the way that this is the auto save because of the way that everything's put together so i'm going to need to lower these windows as it turns out but the the ceiling would come up to the to the beams and so that's it for now actually uh, so the auto save has kicked in and i've tried to change the auto save length to an hour and it's just not working for some reason so um i've gone into the config file and everything and it's and it's just not working so anyway i'm going to carry on building because i'm actually got a bit of an inspiration spark so let me get on with that and i'll see you for the next update and just like magic it starts to come together see i told you it would so i've spent the last update pulling together the hotel so everything to do with the exterior building the exterior look the actual size and everything and i noticed when i was doing the building that it was actually too tall so it didn't need to be as tall as it was because we had quite a lot of dead space over what would be the gift shop the bar and the actual reception area now if if we were putting hotel rooms within this block then i would say keep it and it could have been a balcony could have been a seating area etc but because this is just a hub of facilities and fun things to do we didn't need to have it so tall and plus it's also a double height building anyway so because we've got this not really a basement type of basement sitting at the front of the the hotel at the back it actually ends up being an extra story tall because you're coming down the stairs so i've ended up just chopping off that top story and then uh leveling out the the ceiling and making it all sort of fit quite nicely a bit flush to the flush to the ceiling there so that's kind of what I wanted it to do and it feels a lot more comfortable it feels a lot better it doesn't dominate as much you're not wasting loads and loads of space and when you think of a park of this size they wouldn't build a building that's, that's way too big for its needs they wouldn't have all of that wasted space that they'd want to put it to, to good use so let's do a tour then shall we so this is the outside um, I need to do the fencing or whatever the walling or whatever I'm going to put around here and I don't know if I'm going to keep the asphalt or if I'm going to use this red uh pathing path just because it feels like it that's what it would be it feels like it would be some kind of poured concrete so i don't know how that's going to go but i started to do the whole flower bed and, and making sure that this is sitting as i want it to so i quite like i quite like this this idea this is working quite well and here's the entrance we have a name so we're called retreat and it's all looking very modern and very fresh and very clean kept the wood paneling but i got rid of the windows that were here with the extra 
uh, story that we've now got rid of, it's no longer needed. So I've just sort of kept the wood panelling right the way across. And we now have an office space, which I need to tidy up. So this needs to go and this is all part of the, the moving down of the building. But this is the office space that I'm going to be using. So nice and small, nice and cramped, but quite a good view out of the windows. Um, so I thought I'd show you this as an actual empty empty office so you can see the the development of it so the, the next update is obviously going to be the last one of this of this episode so i want to get all of the internal spaces and stuff detailed to a certain level so that i can then move on to do the conference center and the uh, hotel runs in the next update and then as part of the the final hotel piece there'd be then one final uh, detailing piece and so then we come into the actual reception area. It's looking really, really nice now. It's looking really clean. Put the skylights in. Again, it's more vanity than, than anything else, but actually it served a purpose with this one. It needs a lot of light coming through because it, otherwise it would just be one big stark, uh, stuck ceiling, but it's looking good. Over here then would be your gift shop. Now I am going to make this the actual hotel, so I'm going to hide the hotel behind this wall so that we can actually have it in use, but I need to decorate and kit out the gift shop as, as if it's actually a gift shop but for now it's just a space so imagine this is like the building process of of this so it's actually been put together and it hasn't had its final fit out yet uh, so that's looking quite nice I, I quite like how the stone and the colors and everything it's all clean it looks it looks clean it looks as I, as I want it to reception area then I've just started to do a little bit of the detailing but like I say it needs the office detailing just to get a feel for how this area is going to look so that's put the hanging lights and I've just put some stuff around uh, this obviously needs more officey things it needs some filing cabinets and all of the stuff that I normally do for this area uh, but it's coming together quite nicely I quite like quite like the look how it is it's very obvious that that's where you go for the reception but it's not domineering the actual area itself so in here we would have seats and benches and, and stuff don't know whether I'm going to use any kind of mascots though um because the Planet Coaster ones are great, like the art, the art style of them is is great. But I don't know if I like using the actual in-game ones for a uh, for a park like this. So anyway, see how I feel. See how I feel. And then we come across to the actual balcony, um, and we can look down. And this is this is coming together nicely as well. So these are tiles. You can't see it at this level, but they've got a slight. Oh, we can kind of there. They've got a slight gap in them, so it looks like the grouting. Uh, of the actual tile itself and it's it looks good and I wanted this area to be slightly different in terms of floor texture just because this is an area that kids and everything would congregate so this is like a will be a performance area when we, when we put the stage in so it needed to have that that feeling of an area that you can stand um, but then I also wanted the feeling of the carpet to be here as well so I've put like this carpet this red carpet down either side the stairwell stairwell just to break up that flooring because otherwise it's if you look up whoops uh, if you look up here uh, there we go if you look up here then you can see the marble and it's actually quite a stark open area whereas down here it's now quite nicely broken up especially around the arcade so the arcade theming is is very red so this now comes into comes into its own put the elevators or the lifts in as well so uh, yeah good old archers everywhere just to get this get the scale and so the doors are as they would be um, i've not done the elevators inside and i don't i don't think i'm going to i don't think we need to um but it just gives that gives that feeling and then down here i need to put some clutter so you'd have leaflet stands and you'd have all sorts of like vending machines and possibly a game stall and and whatever that's that's going to be in here so uh, it's looking it's looking nice and then the arcade itself the entrance is now uh, a bit it makes a bit more sense now that i've put the walls and everything in down this side so before it was just a bit of an entrance that was plopped there and it didn't really serve much of a purpose or much of an idea but it's now it's now there and it's now looking good and on the left hand side over here we've got the um uh, we've got the conference center so i'm not going to do this this episode i'm going to wait until the next episode to finish this because once you start this reception area or the extension then you start to have to do the lobby and then the conference room and then the toilet yeah it just gets out of control so you just need to know when to stop for an episode but this is this is where i am at the moment i want this to feel like it's a bit of an extension it's a bit of an afterthought uh, so it's going to be a bit of a, a smaller flat roof type of building that shares the same brick build but it's been tagged on as like a bit of a conservatory style extension which then leads into the lobby which then leads into the main conference 
conference center. And then coming down here, I've, I've put all of the paneling and the I've tidied up all of the windows and I've put the doors and everything in all along here. And I really like how this is now starting to look. It's really nice and open and airy. Um, but it's also quite light as well at, at night. So you've got all of this, the spotlights and everything. So I just need to finish off uh, the stuff that's coming along here. And then through into the bar, which now has a name, Snoozy Sues. Uh, I've just started to kit this out. Now we're quite limited with bar stuff that we can that we can use. So like we don't, there's no fridges anywhere on either Workshop or TMTK. So I've just pulled this together, and I've done the same sliding thing with the with the lift doors. Um, so it looks it looks like it's an actual sliding a sliding fridge but that's probably the best you're going to be able to achieve i've started to kit out uh, the stuff along the top as well now we don't have spirit bottles so i can't do free pours and i can't do optics and stuff and the bottles that we do have they're not really much that you can that you can use so and the wine bottles as well these ones are awesome like whoever, whoever created them did a really really good job but they're great for the uh, for the theme rather that like the, the theme that they're intended for so the whole uh, princess amelie theme rather than using it in a bar but it works you know like they sit on a wine shelf and they look all right so uh, obviously needs more details it needs the final the final stuff doing hello uh, the final stuff doing it needs its seats and, and, and everything but this is like this is nice now i quite like i quite like how this is how this is turning out and then the garden i'm not going to do this episode so i've just put down some of the uh some of the paving slabs just to make sure that it's representative and i know what it's going to go here but obviously this is going to come all the way out and it needs a full a full piece of work um likewise with the kitchen by the way so behind behind here the kitchen's still unfinished because there's not many kitchen items there's loads of like um workbench items and sinks and stuff but there's no real actual industrial kitchen so i might need to leave this blank for the time being and see what and see what happens uh, with everything else because I don't really want to be making stuff out of art shapes and whatever because it's going to start taking away from the believability of, of the whole thing. But uh, and then just this now this has got its roof uh, or its ceiling on. This is what this now looks like. So uh, the laundry comes down here and this is now all ceiled off and you can now see that the actual natural light and everything is is correct. And I've just put in all of the the windows and, and moved and moved them down. So that's pretty much. The update this is this is where this is now this is now sitting so i'm just going to start the, the this episode detailing phase to make sure that everything in in this area is, is as i want it before then the next episode we can move on to the conference center and dealing with the actual rooms or it might be that's my plan or i might end up doing conference center and pools i don't know yet depends on how long the conference center takes so anyway i'm gonna carry on and i will see you for the final update all right so just like that the retreat is open for business or at least the hub part is anyway and i'm ready to put the done for now stamp on this section so this is the main facilities building this is where all the entertainment and everything happens obviously we still need to do the conference center we still need to do all of the rooms the gardens the pool the car park the landscaping still loads and loads and loads to do but i'm ready to put the done for now stamp on this particular section and when i was designing everything I sort of lost sight of the fact that this is supposed to be a theme park hotel. So it started to feel like a shopping centre. Um, it started to feel very cold in the end. So in my pursuit of this ultra modern clean look, it ended up being stagnant. So I had to remember that it's a theme park. So I've, I've ended up putting loads of like the vintage stuff around. The vintage stuff is awesome for the sort of things that you find that are really interesting to look at that would keep the, the kids entertained when it comes to being in a hotel. And it now feels like an actual theme park hotel rather than this cold shopping center so anyway let's go for a tour shall we so we go through the main doors into the foyer area and here we go so we've got fun stuff over the side here not sure if i want to keep this font the same i, I might end up using the vintage lettering that comes with the game you know the ones with the lights in um i need to toy with that later on but anyway we can come across into the gift shop and the gift shop is now fully fully kitted out so we've got all of the stuff on the shelves um we've also got the uh pictures on the walls and, and everything's all like decorated and through the back here is the actual hotel so this is now functional in Planet Coaster as a four-star hotel it's not five star because it's not using priority passes and, and exclusivity stuff um but it's as best you're going to get in the actual game and then we come across here so we've got some seating just on the balcony uh, just so that you can sort of chill out and, and do whatever. I uh, decided to keep these tables clear as opposed to the other tables that have got flowers and everything on it because you've got a full risk here. So if someone knocks over a, a plant, it could go down the 
to the restaurant below, which you'll see in a minute because you haven't seen the seating and everything that's down there. So I've kept intentionally kept these tables these tables clear. I've got a bit of a feature thing here. So um, whoops, I wanted to start to bring in some of the colours that were used at the entrance of the park and also some of the colours of the rides as well. So uh, I've managed to bring those across uh, through into the flower palette as well. So I just wanted to make sure that this is uh, this is all there. And these are functional seats. So underneath here are just the race car benches that came with the road update that we had. Uh, and so people, guests will actually come along and they'll sit here. And the idea is you'd probably sit here whilst you're waiting for a taxi or waiting for family and, and stuff to, to come along to the actual hotel. And then we come across to reception. So loads of staff working, loads of like um, gifty type stuff or leaflets and, and things. And again, I needed to kit this out with more like theme parky stuff. I completely forgot that it was supposed to be this fun environment so I've, I've added like loads of accents and everything to the to the theme park world uh, just inside here so it's looking it's looking awesome like, I quite like the color scheme actually I didn't know if it was going to be too bland when I was designing it but actually it's turned out turned out quite nicely and then through here we've got the office space so here's where you put your luggage so this is where they would store luggage if guests are going on to park and they want to uh, leave their luggage with the hotel for a while and then we come into the office space and it's just really quite a nice minimal office. Um, I think it's going to need another detail pass just to make it sort of a bit, bit cleaner. Um, but I'm done. With, I'm done for now. It's it's an office. It does it does what it needs does what it needs to do. I come across here. Then I've changed the flooring here. Um, I wanted it to match the bottom. I wanted to bring the, the the lower level to the top level as well, just so that it's a consistent theme that flows throughout the entire uh, and the entire hotel. Added some seats and everything along here and some vending machines and just clutter and again it's the theme park accent stuff so like the penguin is there um real subtle uh, and then you've just got the pictures and everything from the uh, from the actual vintage pack and the and the normal the normal building pack a couple of roller coaster seats that are around again these penguins uh, they seem to be the mascot of the hotel at the moment um so again this is just to accent the fact that it's a theme park so you need the test seats and, and stuff um and then we come to the stairwell and then you've got your, your monkey and your, your penguins again. Um, again, just reminding you, it's still part of the theme park. Then we come downstairs. I haven't put the stage in yet. I'm going to do that as part of the conference center, a bit of an entertainment update. But I've just left an accent there just to say, yes, there's, there's something that's going to be here. Here's some, here's some equipment stuff. Uh, I've kitted out the restaurant area. So this is where you can come and grab a seat and grab some food and, and whatever. So uh, this is already. And I've put loads of these signs around as well. Obviously, you'd have adverts for days out and things that you can do on park roller coasters and annual passes and all that sort of stuff so that's going to be part of the update that i do when we do all of the graphics and, and everything it's quite going to be quite a big piece of work to do these menus i've pulled off the tmtk they are so good uh, they look awesome so uh, i've just added them adding them in and then i've just kitted out the bar area so snoozy Sue's is now fully kitted out with its stuff that it needs to do and i grabbed some beer stuff um off of the Again, TMTK, so these are awesome as well. And it now actually feels a bit more like a bar than it did before. The tea bars I made myself. So these are just using beams. You'd be surprised to learn. Um, and they're just they have black handles. They, they're, not, they're not perfect. You're never going to get them perfect because we don't have small enough pieces. But it does what it needs to do from a, from a distance. You know that it's a tea bar. We don't have little badges that are small enough. You, there's just no pieces that I can find anywhere on, on either TMTK or anywhere that would just be small enough to use as, as badges so i'll just have to go without simple as that um but yeah it's looking it's looking good now it's looking like an actual bar and i raised the bar height slightly as well i realized that it was probably a little bit too a little bit too shallow at one meter so it's now sitting at about one and a half meters kitted it out with just some seating and and stuff and then the same with the actual foyer area so i've added in the emergency signs and everything just for the for the doors um, added out loads and loads and loads of seating so this would be a bit of a chill out area that you'd come to quite nicely you know in the evening sit out and look out on the garden if it's raining or you could sit out on the actual patio and you'd have full sight of whatever the feature that I'm going to use is here or the site of the pool over here but actually in the background and I don't know how it's going to be obscured when we put the building up but you can also see the coaster as well so I quite like that as a as a sight line Conference centre, I haven't touched anything else in here, so I've just put a floor down just to, I think I, actually this was in the last update anyway, but I've just put a floor down just to give a bit of continuity when I'm doing screenshots like that. You can see that it's got a floor. 
And then over here, I've just put the, the vintage steam thing in. I wanted it to be um, on, but it was running way too quickly for something that wouldn't need a barrier and look ugly. Um, like if it, if it could run slowly, then great, it would be awesome. But because it's running too quickly, you don't want a kid climbing on it and like being flung up or whatever would happen. It's just not a, not a good look. So I just decided to put that there. So it's, again, it's just something feature and it breaks up the space slightly. And then we come in to grabby grabby. Uh, and so the, nothing's changed in here. This is actually as, as it is. All I've done is I've just done the nighttime lighting and made sure that it's bright and obnoxious. Uh, so it's looking, it's looking complete now. It's looking good. I like it. Uh, and then over to the lift area again, just filled it out with your vending machines and your leaflet stands and uh, sell like marketing material and, and, and whatever. So this is all looking it's all looking good. And then if we go into back of house kitchen, I've not done. I'm not going to touch the kitchen just yet. Um, it needs whoops. It needs doing, but uh, I, it's just not enough stuff to uh, on the on TMTK to actually make it to make it work. So I don't know how I'll, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, but we come into the bin area. Not much has changed here. It's all as we left it. Uh, I've just put the the lights, the strip lighting on here. Probably a bit overkill for the corridor, but uh, just put the strip lighting down here. And then we come into the laundry area, and the laundry area hasn't really changed much either. It's still still staying as it is. And then on the outside, I decided to change the dash vault. I felt like it needed to it felt like this area needed to match the color of the bricks to make these bricks make sense so this is what i've done i've just done like um concrete along here just to say here's the here's, here's a wall um and then the concrete pillars and then i just put these uh, upturned windows on the other side as well the auto save has just kicked in uh so come on come on come on um yeah and then i just use the tmtk fences that you can find as well um along here just to then hide the curb so it looks like it's flush and i've done the other i've done the same on this flower bed as well so i've hidden the actual curb itself so that it's because it's raised up you don't have the ability to remove those curbs so i've just hidden the curbs and it now looks a lot nicer now that it's flush and these as it turns out they work quite well on a slant on an angle coming down on an incline so i kind of like just let this let this go down to the outside and then obviously landscaping around here and whatever still needs to be done at a later stage but that's pretty much it for for now that's retreat so the the actual central entertainment hub is now done so guys thank you so much whilst we battle with the auto so thank you so much for coming along for the ride if you excuse the pun uh, if you like the episode you want to know what happens next then you know what to do leave a like leave, leave a subscription and you'll get notified the next episodes but i think in the next one we're going to focus mainly on the conference center area this needs to be finished off the entertainment bit in, inside and i think we're going to be able to do the he says the rooms um i think i'm going to i'm going to treat the rooms a little bit like planet zoo in the sense that the staff rooms and the staff facilities and everything are plop in place so they all look the same um so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do two templates of each of the rooms and then just copy them around and then the detailing of the building so i don't know i need to actually do it to, to, to know so but anyway for now thank you guys thank you so much for coming along keep yourself safe and i will see you for the next episode <laughs>